honor and glorify you. We thank you for your love and your mercies. This day we choose to believe. This day we choose to trust you. We choose to put our eyes on you. Show yourself strong. Do your miracles. Do your wonders, Lord. Do your blessings in our lives. We thank you. We thank you. We love you. We wait on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord richly bless you. Amen. We're in Acts chapter 18, verse 8 to 11. Acts 18, verse 8 to 11. The title of my message is Believing in God's Promise and Presence. Believing in God's Promise and Presence. The Bible says there in verse 8 of Acts chapter 18, then Crispus, the rule of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his household and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Now the Lord spoke to Paul in the night by a vision, do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent, for I am with you and no one will attack you to hurt you. For I, I have many people in this city. And he continued there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. The Bible says there in verse 8, that uh, as Paul and his team, as they were preaching in the synagogue, something was happening next to the synagogue, in the neighborhood. Something, that which was happening right there to the leader of the synagogue, Crispus himself, Bible says, because of Paul and his ministry in the neighborhood, he couldn't resist. He couldn't, he couldn't deny. He couldn't even contradict. He couldn't oppose the gospel that was being preached by Paul. And that confirms what Jesus said in Luke 21 verse 15. Luke 21 15, Jesus promised us as believers that he shall give us a mouth and a wisdom that cannot be resisted, cannot be denied, cannot be opposed, cannot be contradicted. For a long time, the, the leaders of the synagogues, they fought this movement. They fought this Christianity. They fought Paul. But at this juncture, Crispus believed the leader of the synagogue himself was converted and joined the kingdom of God. And then in verse 8, the Bible continues and says that even many Corinthians, they believed and were baptized. But then that also brought some worry to Paul. For you see, Paul would remember when he saw this revival happening right here, he would remember that some time back he had seen such a revival in Antioch at a city called Lystra and what followed was his stoning to death. And miraculously he was resurrected. We know the story. But also we know that he, not just there in Lystra where there was a revival and then Paul was stoned, but even in Philippi when he was preaching and had casted out demons from a girl, then the result of it was he was beaten and put in prison. It took God miraculously to deliver Paul and Silas when there was an earthquake and the prison doors were open. And therefore Paul is afraid when he sees Christmas now believing and the Corinthian people are getting saved. He is afraid because he knows that he's in, in his heart he's rejoicing in the miracles of God, but his mind is worried what persecution is going to come. For he has seen by experience that every time there is a gain in ministry, there is also personal pain that comes after that gain. When there is a revival and big and great things are happening in his ministry, what follows after that is persecution and pain. And therefore his heart is rejoicing, but his mind is worried, not sure who, what they are going to do to him because of these people who are getting saved and the blessing and the miracles and the things happening right here, right, right there in Corinth. 
But the Bible continues and says uh, that night uh, the Lord appeared to Paul. When he's worried, when he's afraid, the Lord appeared to Paul at night in his dark season. The Lord appeared to him and gave him two gifts. He said to him, I'm giving you these two things. Number one, I'm giving you a promise. And number two, I'm assuring you of my presence. The two gifts that are given to every believer, that are given to every Christian, we are given a promise and uh, his presence. And that's why today I'm, I'm talking to us on believing in God's promises and believing in his presence. Let me remind you that when Jesus was about to ascend to heaven, he called his disciples together. And then in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, Jesus said to the disciples, his last words, he said, all authority and power has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go into all the nations and preach the gospel, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and then he said to them uh, observing all things and he said lo I am with you until the end of the age Jesus his last words to the church to the Christians to the believers he didn't give them some principles he never gave them some people to lead them he didn't even give them a program but he gave them a promise of his presence that is what jesus left with the church that i will never leave you i will never forsake you i'm together with you to the end of the age he was aware there would be persecution but we have the promise of his presence he was aware some of them would be killed and beheaded but there is a promise he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Glory to God. And that is what Paul is, what, that is what God is saying to Paul right here. If here in verse 10, he's saying to him, for I am with you and no man shall be able to hurt you. I am with you. The Lord is saying he is with us. Even in that dark season, in that situation, he's promising Paul, I am with you. And because of that promise, Paul, who was used to do some short missions, he would visit a city and within very short time, he would leave that city and go to another city. But he ended up staying in Corinth for one year and a half. We are told there in verse 11. After he got a promise from God of God's presence with him and that nobody is going to hurt him, Paul stayed for one year and a half right there he got established he got settled reason being he has a promise of god that nobody is going to hurt you and nobody is going to come down on you and he has a promise of my presence is together with you and i want to say to us children of god that the bible carries with it over three thousand promises the question is are we believing in those promises are we believing in the promises of God? Because if you believe in the promises of God, you shall be established. You will be strengthened. You will be able to continue. You shall not be frightened. You shall not be faint-hearted. If you believe in the promises of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1.20, 2 Corinthians 1.20, the promises of God are yes and amen. When God says it, count it down. If God has declared it, it is settled. But the question is, do you believe? Because your outcome, your response is going to determine how you shall do. For, for Paul, he was able to continue because he believed the word of God. That God said, nobody shall hurt you. And I am together with you. He promised, he gave him a promise and his presence. And that made Paul to continue for one year and a half. In Acts chapter 12, verse 6 and 7, Acts chapter 12, verse 6 and 7, Bible says that when Herod was about to kill Peter the following day, Peter was sleeping in the middle of soldiers, his hands chained and his feet chained. He was sleeping. How could he sleep? Because he had a promise from Jesus in John 21 verse 18. John 21 verse 18, just before Jesus ascended, he said to Peter, when you are young, you used to guard yourself and you would go wherever you want. But when you become an old man, you shall stretch your hands 
and another person is going to carry you. And Bible says Jesus talking that he signified the kind of death that Peter would die. So Jesus said to Peter, you shall die an old man and you shall die by crucifixion. So he was not afraid of Herod and the plan that Herod had against him. Why? He had a word from Jesus that he would die old and by crucifixion. And I want to put it to you, there is a promise God has given you in his word. If you believe in the promises of God, if you believe in the presence of God together with you, that you are never alone, you shall be established. You shall be settled. You will be able to continue in the calling, in the ministry, in the life that God has for you. Paul believed the promise. He believed the word of God and he was able to continue settled and established. But there is another man who didn't believe in Isaiah chapter 7, Isaiah chapter 7, we have a king called King Ahaz. King Ahaz was a king in Judah. He was not a very nice king. But then one day, two nations rose against Judah. That is Israel and Syria. Israel being led by a man called Pekah. And Syria being led by a man called Rezin. They came, they rallied together, and they planned to invade against Judah. And at that point, the Bible says there in verse 1 going down, that, that, that King Ahaz was frightened and faint-hearted. He was afraid when he heard of the plot of Israel, ten nations on the northern side, coming against this, uh, the, the southern side, I mean two, ten tribes of the northern side called Israel, coming against Judah on the southern side, which was only a nation of two tribes, and the, the, the Israelites have confederated together with the Syrians. They are coming against this small nation. And therefore, Ahaz had a reason to be afraid. Just like you today. Maybe when you hear of the challenges in life, the economical, the physical, the spiritual, the emotional challenges that are coming against you, you have all the reason to be afraid. Ahaz too was afraid. But the Bible says God spoke to Isaiah the prophet. And he said to Isaiah, go tell King Ahaz not to be afraid because... Whatever Israel and Syria have planned against Judah, it shall not come to pass. Their plans will not stand. Praise the Lord. God gave a word. He even said to King Ahaz, your response towards my promise will even have no effect to the outcome. God is saying to Ahaz, whether you believe or not, whether you believe or not what I'm promising, it shall not have an effect to the outcome of the situation. The Syrians will still not prevail. The Israelites will still not win. There are some promises that God has given us. Your faith does not determine whether it will happen or not. For example, God has promised Jesus is coming again. Whether you believe or not, Jesus is coming. The Lord promised in John 14 verse 1 and 2. John 14 verse 1 and 2. God said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go prepare this place, I will come and receive you. So that where I am, there you may be also. That does not require your faith. He is coming whether you believe or not. And that is what God is saying to the king of Judah. Whether you believe or not, he shall not change the outcome. The Syrians will not prevail. The Israelites will not win against Judah. And I want to declare to you, there are some promises that will come to pass in your life but then there is this issue if you don't believe it shall not affect the outcome but it is bound to affect you as a person there in Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9 Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9 God said to King Ahaz if you don't believe you shall not be established you shall be faint hearted you shall be afraid you shall freak out because you don't believe Praise the Lord. The Lord is saying, whether you believe or not, the victory is assured, is determined. But if you believe it is good for you, 
Because you shall not continue in fear. You shall not continue in anxiety. You shall not continue in emotional roller coaster. You shall be stable mentally, emotionally, spiritually, even as you wait upon the promises of God. Praise the Lord. You will have stability when you believe in the presence of God and when you believe in the promises of God in your life. I want to assure you that if God has said it, he shall honor his word. Bible says in Psalm 138 verse 2, Psalm 138 verse 2, the Bible says uh, that he has magnified his word even above his name. And in Jeremiah 1 verse 12, Jeremiah 1 verse 12, the Bible says the Lord watches over his word to perform it. Praise the Lord. The Lord is watching his word to perform. If you believe his word, he will relax. Praise the Lord. Like Paul, he believed the promise of God and he was established, settled. He was able to continue for another one year and a half. But King Ahaz, he refused to believe. And because of his failure to believe, he was inconsistent. He was unstable. He was emotionally disturbed because he will not believe the promises of God. The other issue or the other problem is some of us, we don't even know the promises. We don't even know the word. The word to believe. Maybe you're in a situation and you're looking for a verse. You are look, you're looking for where God speaks concerning that situation in his word. And you don't have that promise. You don't have a scripture to stand upon. I still have a word for you. When, when King Ahaz refused even to believe the promise that had been given to him, God went ahead and said to him, in Isaiah 7 verse 14, Isaiah 7 verse 14, God said, Therefore, the Lord himself is going to give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Praise the Lord. The Lord shall give you a sign that you there the you there is not singular. In the original text of Hebrew, the you is in plural. Meaning, God is saying to King Ahaz, I shall give you a sign. But this sign is not just for you. It is a sign for all people. In all history, in all ages, in all locations. It is a sign for everyone. You may not have a verse, a promise in your situation. But there is already a sign that is given to us that a virgin shall be with a child and this child shall be called Emmanuel. In other words, regardless of whatever situation you are going through today, there is a word that is general, that you are never alone. God has given you a promise of his presence. Emmanuel, God with us. Praise the Lord. You may not know what Deuteronomy says. You may not know what Ezekiel is saying. You may not know your verse in Philemon or in Revelation. But there is this sign that has been given unto you. And you can stand on that word that I am never alone. God is together with me in this situation. And because he will never leave me nor forsake me, I know I shall come out more than a conqueror. Even in this situation. Glory to God. He has given us a sign. A sign is Emmanuel. Knowing that God is with you, he is the ultimate source of our stability, of our strength, of our victory. He is the one who is in control. He is the one, if you allow him, because he is together with us, if we allow him to take the driver's seat, then we can sleep, we can relax, we can rest. The problem happens when you decide to get him off the driver's seat and you decide to steer the wheel. If you take on the wheel and you are a child, then there is danger of 
wavering or swerving. There is danger of veering off the road. You are putting your life at risk. But if you allow him to be the driver of your life, you may not know where you are, but I can assure you, you can relax knowing who is with you. You may not know where you are in life, but I know who is with me. I know who I am. And I know he's in control and in charge of my life. Praise the Lord. I encourage us today, let the word of Christ dwell in us richly. Colossians 3.16. Paul says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Get to unravel, get to study, get into the in-depth of the word. Get to know how all the promises, all the promises that God is speaking concerning your life. Because the promise of God and the presence of God, then you believe in it, you shall be established. The pro let the word of Christ, let, let the promises of God dwell richly in your, in your heart. And then always be in the presence of God. Why? Psalm 16 verse 11, as I finish, Psalm 16 verse 11, the Bible says, In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy and at his right hand their pleasures forevermore enjoy his promises enjoy his presence get to the word of god and when you get to the word of god get into it looking for his promises and finding rest at his presence finding your joy in his presence shall we pray we well, thank you for your word your promises are yes and amen heaven and earth shall pass away but your word, Lord, remains forever. I do pray today, O oh God, that, Lord, we shall be those who are studying the scriptures, even to make ourselves approved unto God. I rebuke ignorance. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke every lie of the devil. Whatever is stopping us from getting into the promises of God, Whatever is coming between us and the presence of God, we nullify it by the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. And now God, I pray that we shall be rich with the promises of God and we shall be engulfed with the presence of God. Where the spirit of God, there is liberty. And I pray for that liberation now. I pray for that liberation now. The liberation that comes with the presence of God. Let your presence overflow us. We thank you, Jesus. We worship and we love you. We praise you and honor you. For in Jesus' name, we pray and we give thanks. Amen. God bless.